Hello and welcome back to another episode of War Tale. Guides, my name is Saikin and today we're going to go through yet another guide for this great game. It is a guide to all of the oils and how to effectively use them and do your builds around them. I'll shortly also cover stamps because I don't think that requires an additional video. It's actually relatively quick, but I want to um, start first with uh, the different oils, then go through the stamps and then show you some footage. So let's go. In order to go through the different oils, I'll shortly tier list them. Not that I'm the biggest fan of tier lists, but it is a relatively good forced order principle where S tier would be always great very very good to have a tier is highly effective b tier is kind of good baseline c tier slightly below average d tier, uh, d tier niche at best or way below average and then kind of f tier wouldn't use at all and it just so happened that i uh, forced myself to put uh, the alls into a category where i have at maximum six in each uh, category so let's start from bottom to top with the worst to the best oils in my perspective f tier would be animal essence oil damage to animals is increased by 25 percent so that i don't think is a very convincing oil at all i personally think uh, animals aren't very difficult uh, to deal with and those who have high hit point pools like bears suffer way more from other status effects uh, that just go for the entirety or percentage of their health pool so i've never really uh, used it and yeah it uh, is solidly and solemnly in f tier moving on to the d tier where we do have six different oils let's start with the easy ones there are three starter oils that uh, Shiro has implemented. Energizing oil that essentially has a chance for 30% more strength than the dexterity equivalent. And then a defensive oil which has a 30% uh, chance to increase uh, or reduce damage taken for the tanks. I think that was a fantastic uh, utilization for the start of the campaign. They are always the first ones to go to and they are cheap to make. So that in itself makes it uh, good but later in the game uh, they are simply not keeping up with the rest. So what are the other three you might ask? Uh, number four would be Soothing Oil. Every time this unit deals a critical hit, they regain 5% of their maximum health. So I've thought long and hard about it uh, and it's at best in niche situation. Number one, there is an oil that does what Soothing Oil does better, which we will see later in a higher tier. Number two, the only real reason why you would use that at all would be on high hit point uh, targets. Say if bears could uh, wear weapons and you have soothing oil on uh, top of it, I could see why that uh, would make sense. But uh, typically tanks don't have enough critical hit uh, damage to reliably crit. Um, every single time and even then 5% of their health isn't enough to write home about DPS at best we'll get away from death door but yeah really it doesn't do enough then shielding oil every time a skill deals damage there's a 50% chance to reduce the damage taken for three rounds the problem with shielding oil is it goes on to the same damage reduction as protection and there is just a lot of protection available in the game uh, just normal skills that uh, give you regular protection I guess you could use it uh, in order to free up a single skill point but that would occupy your trinket slot and uh, this here or your headpiece uh, slot the passive ability there so I think shielding oil might be niche usable if you do have a very specific build in mind, but I wouldn't go for it. And finally, regeneration oil. Every time uh, this unit ends their turn next to an ally and is not engaged in combat, they regain 5% of their health. Same deal really with the other uh, healing oil. This is easier to pull off. And I guess uh, it you could utilize that in order to always heal yourself even if you're dying so you could have a couple of uh, nasty combinations as long as the enemy um, con uh, does not continue to uh, kill you i can see why regeneration oil is okay but yeah really not uh, worth it in my perspective 
Moving on to the C tier, where we do have six oils as well. Let's go through them one by one. Acidic oil. Acidic oil uh, does a deal uh, burning damage, 50% uh, chance after you attack an enemy. That can be improved to 100% with the right uh, trinket. And I want to say that for many of uh, the status effect uh, trinkets, once you do have the trinket, you can also invest in the respective mastery. So in this case, my burning in my game already increase, is increased by 5%. It's not 10, but 15% uh, hit point damage. So that's not bad. Why is it then in C tier, which is kind of niche? Number one, you want to uh, build around burning if you are using burning. Uh, you might want to uh, get at least your tanks immune uh, to burning, then it could be quite helpful for longer fights. Number two, the problem with a lot of the delayed damage is it really happens after the enemy uh, gets their turn. So the idea is you, in a, per a perfect world, want to alpha strike them. However, I will say if you're playing on extreme, then this becomes much better because all of a sudden you uh, will fight against hugely inflated hit point pools and just having burning, bleeding and poison on enemies to dwindle their hit point pool down is great. So that's why I gave it a niche C tier. Alertness oil, uh, similar uh, C tier because certain builds can work with it, but on regular occasions it wouldn't be that good. Damage from attacks of opportunity plus 15%. Uh, two types of builds. Um, would really work well with that. For instance, spearmen or uh, zone archers that just do a lot of attacks of opportunity or the other types of builds would be um, any form of melee engage build that disengages and then do, uh, does attack of opportunity. So the whole retaliation builds, they can work with that. Uh, you can use that oil plus another oil which does this the job um, a little bit better together in order to deal some decent damage with attacks of opportunity. However, it is just relevant for specific builds. Next up on the list, propulsion oil. Whenever a unit knocks an enemy back, they have a 50% chance to destabilize, as in bring the guard of the unit down to zero. That's fantastic if you do have a regular pushback ability. So for instance, if you do have the hunter's shot or if you do have a spearman um, that can regularly push enemies back, then that effectively means their guard is reduced to zero, which uh, will uh, enable follow-up damage massively. So good oil if you know how to use it, but you need the right build for it. Next up, Misty Oil, which uh, every time a skill deals damage, has a 50% chance to deal 5% of the target's maximum health to their health. So uh, that sounds very low. However, there are a couple of um, options uh, where this becomes um, even borderline abusive. Number one, Pugilist uh, deals a lot of damage or uh, with a lot of different hits. So that stacks up nicely and always uh, dealing a little bit extra uh, hit point to the tar uh, hit point damage to the target is great. Number two, um, it is comparably to all of the other status effect oils, one that deals immediate damage to, uh, to hit points. So that's not bad. If uh, you do have a lot of attacks to spare, then that is great. I'm thinking about a rogue with an offend that continues to, uh, to, to deal uh, damage. Uh, that, for instance, would uh, trigger Misty Oil as well. So good combination uh, there. However, dependent, of course, on the build. Next one, uh, Companion starts the fight with Deflection. I, again, gave that very much a it depends. Um, if you do have a situation where you're uh, notoriously underleveled or where the enemies are trying to one-shot your backline, that's actually a great solution because if you do have 70% uh, damage reduction on the first hit, then chances are that even your uh, squishies will be able to mitigate at least one hit. Now, will that be enough to win the fight? That's um, up to you and anyone's guess, but it is a bit of a get out of jail card, specifically on higher difficulties. So I put it there for a reason. Next up, Paralyzing Oil. Um, every time skill deals damage, has a 50% chance to apply slowdown for one round, which is a movement reduction by half. And I cannot stress enough, I 
uh, underestimated how helpful that is. But I cannot stress enough on larger battlefields and specifically if you're running larger groups how helpful this can be. Imagine uh, using that plus a couple of skills that do have a long range. An archer, for instance, with aim shoots um, shoots an arrow across the battlefield, slows someone down, then push back um, shot the hunter specialization, slows someone else down, or even the um, uh, the many opportunities that you do have uh, with um, uh, with an assassin going into the back line. Um, and hitting enemies and then applying slowdown. There's a lot of that can be unpacked here. It's a good oil if you know what you're doing. Let's move on to B tier where the good oils uh, that just didn't make it into the absolute top are. Uh, for starters, we're starting with uh, unstable oil. Good oil, I really appreciate it after attacking an enemy in close combat. 25% chance to follow up with an attack of opportunity. That's not too bad. Um, it is specifically good for retaliation builds, but I can confirm that it works actually quite well on a lot of build pugilists, for instance, uh, will work well with that as well, because a lot of the pugilist abilities uh, require just a lot of attacks to happen before you get another attack. So those attacks of opportunity count for yet another um, attack. If you do have uh, something like feather stacks up on the enemy, um, or poison stacks with every single attack, then uh, the unstable oil can definitely help you. You, however, need to know how to engage and disengage. So uh, mm, I take it with a bit of a grain of salt. It's definitely stronger than the uh, mm, than the C tier, but it is not quite A tier yet. Next up, bleeding oil. So bleeding, just like burning, is one of uh, those status effects that has de uh, has a delay. Um, and deals 25% uh, damage to the target. So why is burning then in uh, C tier and this here is B tier? Well, quite simple. Burning um, will uh, propulsively uh, cast over to adjacent targets after the enemy um, moves. So even if you burn an enemy, they then move to you, attack you, die from the burning, you still burning, uh, you're still burning, and therefore you need to kind of work around that. Bleeding doesn't have that problem. Bleeding essentially just um, means the enemy is uh, taking 20% hit point loss. Um, and uh, if you upgrade it like I did, uh, then it is even 25% hit point loss, which isn't too bad. So additionally, bleeding enables a couple of abilities such as the assassin ability uh, that um, increases the crit chance and uh, damage when targets are bleeding. And it's actually a really good ability. So if you want a rider effect and you're using um, a lot of builds around applying status effects and bleeding is a good one, uh, definitely a good one. I put then both of uh, the stat oils, uh, the strength oil and uh, the swiftness oil, which is the better version of the, the uh, D tier uh, small oils. Basically has a 50% chance to increase dexterity or strength, I think by 10%. Um, that's not too sh uh, shabby even in the end game, because if you max out crit with the right runes and you are running at 100% crit, then realistically what you're going to see is that uh, you want to increase the main stat. And this really helps because it is de facto kind of a 10% improvement, uh, which is noticeable. So it's simply more damage, higher numbers and so on, which uh, brings it solidly into B tier. Next up, conversion oil. Every time a skill deals damage, 50% chance to restore an amount of health equal to 20% of the damage. So. Um, I debated with myself whether or not I want to put it into B tier or into C tier um, and instead put the um, flaming oil up there. But upon just looking at the utilization, although this here is also niche, I can see a lot more utility. And the two oils that heal you in uh, the D tier, essentially with adjacency and with uh, attacking, they are really not as great as the conversion oil. If you think about uh, just the amount of damage that you're dealing specifically with your DPS, and you can restore 20% of that, that's fantastic. You can basically restore yourself all the way up to full. Now that's the good news. The bad news on the other hand is the enemies, uh, once your armor is gone, tend to also deal quite a lot of damage. So there is 
uh, there is a good chance that you are going to lose all of those uh, regained hit points which is why I didn't really put it any um, anywhere higher once your guard is gone you're taking a lot of uh, damage and the hit point pool is nowhere near where it needs to be in order to life drain uh, tank and finally wetting oil every time a skill deals damage 50% chance to apply bleeding um, that is a bit redundant with a bleeding um, oil but since bleeding itself has a is a very very good uh, uh, skill I put both of them uh, right here the wetting oil clearly has a higher chance maybe by thinking about it I'll put the burning oil just up here um, and put the lower chance bleeding oil down there so um, case closed we are done and with B tier let's move on and we're coming to A tier the oils that are really good and that you should keep an eye on um, we're starting with putrid oil every time a skill deals damage 50% uh, chance to apply fever uh, fever is not to be slapped upon that's really the putrid oil I absolutely like it um, works very very well together with the pugilist uh, for instance where you are just increasing fever sticks over and over um, against bosses so um, if you are single target dps um, such as the assassin or the pugilist for instance then that oil is a massive boost to damage it there is an awkward situation at the very very end game when you're dealing so much damage that basically everything just dies uh, where this oil becomes a bit less powerful but until that point I can tell you it is absolutely fantastic have three four stacks of uh, feather um, on the enemy and that's just more damage next up protection oil user cannot take direct damage from allies uh, so I debated whether or not I put that a little bit lower but I've uh, used it firsthand and I must say it has really convinced me the amount of uh, times when you could just harponeer through something or make an AOE melee attack and your tank is sort of in the way in an awkward form this is simply solving it it's a quality of life oil that doesn't do anything outside of it but what it does it does extremely well so in my perspective I take it in high regard I've used it in my first Belarian playthrough it is a fantastic oil and I would highly recommend you give it at least a try next up poisonous oil from all of the status effects poison definitely is the most interesting one uh, poison just like burning and bleeding is quite potent at uh, the moment uh, with the poison mastery um, instead of the five percent uh, stack you can uh, you can see right up here it's essentially plus one uh, so it's six percent uh, stack which I guess means you only need 16 stacks instead of uh, the typical 20 in order to one shot kill enemies so why is the poison oil up here and not down where the others are for starters uh, poison has a great mechanic with a lot of uh, the other skills there is a helmet enchantment that gives plus 25 percent damage against poisoned units uh, combine that with the poison oil and you immediately after using your first skill uh, you're going to see a 25 percent damage increase flat out it's just there so that in itself is great on top of it it deals uh, hit point damage on top of it it's the only one that is stackable so if you can use uh, multiple attacks you can get a lot of poison stacks up there two rogues together can get 20 poison stacks or 18 po or 16 poison stacks onto a target in no time and then it just means the targets die um, if you really run a poison based build so a lot to uncover here I personally absolutely like it and it's a stable in my repertoire next up uh, the uh, tanking or more uh, Valor driven builds uh, initiative oil every time this unit is attacked 25% chance to get a Valor what's not to like about it if you do have two oils and your tanks are not supposed to deal damage then make sure that you get the most Valor regeneration possible specifically on extreme that's important because you can't always use uh, skills in order to kind of get valor um, points but if you do have that 25% chance to just get a valor point when you're attacked and you're going to be attacked quite often then that is a great addition uh, 
Next up, hardening oil. Um, every time you use the oil, um, uh, use a Valor Point skill, you have a 50% chance to get in position. For those who are unaware, in position doubles your guard. So why would I put that in A tier? It sounds like something uh, that m belongs more into D tier. Hear me out for a second. I'm all up for alpha striking and this game has a lot of alpha striking in there. But in various party uh, compositions, you will find your uh, situation, you will find a situation where you don't have enough tanks. Uh, specifically, if you're running lower parties, say a uh, lower uh, number parties, say four or six, you might even end up with only one tank. That uh, oftentimes means someone else needs to tank. And that typically uh, falls upon kind of the two-handed uh, character or a spearman or whatnot. The challenge with um, all of these characters is if they run medium armor, they really don't have enough guard in order to pull it off. Typically in the end game, you end up with 40-ish guard um, or 30-something-ish guard. Now, if you can use hardening oil and you're using your skills, all of a sudden, for one round, you're getting all the way up to the cap, 80% guard. That is ultra good. It effectively means you trade a slot for an oil in return for more uh, damage and you still have plenty, plenty of guard left in order to, uh, to utilize that. So. I was a big fan of it. I've used it a lot of times on my main party. I do have it uh, as a stable because it just increases survivability. And finally, explosive oil, which is also a really good one. Uh, granted, it is a bit niche-ish because it works better on AOE builds, but you can use it on single target damage builds as well. Uh, explosive oil essentially means when you attack uh, someone, there's a 50% chance that 50% of that damage will go to a, a target that st stays near to them. Needless to say, if they cluster up and you AOE attack, then that uh, accumulates and you will have a lot of jump over damage so it is great for damage escalation but it is also good on it uh, on its own because it will deal damage immediately that means before the enemy can act uh, you have a chance to kill them and if you are smart with math you will figure out ways of multi-killing with that which brings us neatly to the S tier, uh, the ones uh, that are incredibly good. Let's start uh, with one that everybody knows, the Sharpening Oil Critical Hit Chance plus 10%. Uh, that is a passive effect, really good. You want uh, to go for critical hit since it is such a strong ability. A lot of things scale off of crit, kind of uh, needless to argue why that wouldn't be S tier. However, in the very end game when you are anyways hitting that 100% crit mark things are starting to change because all of a sudden this year becomes less important because you hit 100% even without any problems so naturally you're going to uh, not use it as much so it's a funny effect next up uh, perforating oil potentially one of my favorite oils um, it straight up ignores 50% of the target's guard. Specifically in later uh, fights, you will see 60-70% of uh, uh, guarding value on the tanks. Bosses have an incredible amount of guard, so this here has no conditions attached to it. It's just 50% of the target's guard is ignored. If you take from behind, that means the guard is only 25% as strong as it normally would be. So almost full damage against the target. What's not to love about that? Next up, Infectious Oil. From all of the delayed damage oils, this year is potentially the strongest. Every time a skill deals damage, uh, it applies an effect uh, that uh, will deal as much damage as 50% of uh, the uh, actual damage. So it is like explosive oil, but it is uh, better because it's on the uh, same target and it is always 50% of uh, the attack damage. So that in itself is great. If you're uh, using high DPS uh, builds, then that will just deal 50% more DPS. There is one catch because the damage doesn't happen immediately. 
the enemy will at least get a turn back. And finally, the brave one's oil. Uh, whenever the unit uses a valor-based skill, there is a solid 50% chance to regain one valor, which is great for tanks and for valor generation. It's the best uh, valor generation in the game, and I highly, highly recommend it. That plus uh, just in uh, the engaged valor means you're always net positive. Um, imagine if you're then even having orderly on top of it, uh, you will be a valor generation machine. And that's always good to have. So now that we know all of uh, the oils, I'll go over a couple of exemplary headpiece gear and how that can work together with oil. So a couple of stamps that you can get when disenchanting helmets. And then we're going to see some footage uh, of uh, these oils in action. All right, this brings us to the stamps. So for starters, how to even get stamps, you will need a uh, very well experienced, uh, respectively masterwork tinkerer, and master tinkerer can disenchant or dismantle any helmet. You will get stamps out of it, uh, so the ability of the helmet will essentially be copied into a stamp that you can then apply to other helmets. Stamps always override the normal ability of the helmet, so you can't have two abilities on a single helmet. So let's get into the stamps themselves. I just really made it A, B and C tier because they are all good in their own regards. It's just a matter of your preference. Let's go into C tier. By the way, these are not all of the stems. Unfortunately, in this safe game, uh, the helmets were installed or introduced to the game much later than me playing through the main storyline. So there might be a few more out there that I do not own currently. So for starters, we do have uh, the Balerian Intimidation. After being knocked back by this unit and into a concrete, you lose 10% of max health. That's not bad, specifically if you have a lot of knockback and can knock back twice as uh, fast. It's also good on... Uh, the ships of the new expansion, uh, knocking someone into an object, therefore deals 10% uh, damage. The next one would be uh, following the same logic. Every time you deal a critical strike, you gain immovable. So if you play in environments where knockback plays a big role, as in ships, uh, this clearly is better than just C tier, but elsewise it basically does not do that much. Next up, Sharp Fin. Um, any unit dealing melee damage to this unit has a 20% uh, chance of suffering bleeding. I was thinking about kind of a retaliatory uh, build where you put uh, Sharp Fin and, uh, the, and a trinket on uh, where you basically r return a lot of uh, damage and then put bleeding on top of uh, them. And with the right skills, you can potentially even get burning um, on top of it as well. The poison helmet uh, would um, would even make it uh, that uh, the enemy poisons themselves. So uh, you potentially can't have all on the same character, but I like the idea of kind of giving a little bit back and making it less attractive uh, for character to be attacked. However, it is not that uh, great compared to the others. Uh, next one, aerodynamic. At the start of your turn, if you're engaged, you get inspiration for one round, which is double movement. Not bad for tanks that suffer with uh, bad movement. However, it is a bit dependent. If you're never engaging, then uh, this could be a false friend. Next up in B tier now, Brotherhood Charisma. Every time this unit engages in combat, adjacent allies gain brutality for one round. That's not bad at all. Uh, imagine you do have a front line and you engage with one of uh, the characters and then there are a couple of others uh, next to them. 30% uh, damage in, uh, increase is not bad at, uh, at all. Uh, I will say though, that it unfortunately doesn't work with multi-attacks. I think they've patched uh, that uh, that out. But if, uh, or back in the days, quote unquote, as it came out, you could multi-attack with a weapon, counted as being engaged in uh, combat, and then you got brutality stacks, uh, brutality stacks with itself. So it is just like feather and deals crazy amounts of damage at uh, some point. Next up, shielding. Uh, this unit gains 4% extra guard. So without that stacking, <coughs> it is just B tier good. Uh, but with the stacking, it's clearly S tier. Shielding, 4% extra guard for each reinforcement layers. 
So this is essentially 12% extra guard on the helmet. Good. It even allows you to build up tanks without a shield, which is a fun uh, little experiment. Moving on to Chaos Poise, as long as this unit is engaged, they do have protection, which isn't bad if you don't get protection from your skill uh, tree or want to free up a skill point in your skill tree, then this here is definitely a good option for a tank, therefore a solid B tier. Next up, Bandit's Focus. Unit gains uh, enhanced precision for a round, which means critical hit chance increased by 20%. That, however, costs a Veiler, if you're not crit chance maxed, that is not bad. It's a decent investment to get 100% crit if you do have enough valor to spend. Now up to the A tier, uh, things that I consider very strong. Uh, pheromone applications um, is definitely one of that. Every time this unit attacks, if the target is engaged with an L um, Oh no, that's the animal one. That actually is D tier. I'm sorry. Um, that requires you to have animal companions, but there is one uh, that allows you to uh, get repost immediately. Give me a sec. There we go. So enhanced visibility is A tier. Every time unit is engaged by an enemy, they perform an attack of opportunity. Uh, that, however, does not work if you engage enemies, so it uh, is not going to be that vindicative uh, as uh, the uh, repost build already is. However, it uh, certainly uh, disincentivizes enemies to engage you, so very, very strong. Assassin's uh, Strych uh, Strychonite, um, Strychonite, which is 25% uh, flat damage for poison units. Talked about that uh, with the poisoning flask. It is straight out good. Um, therefore A tier and finally Celerity 4 which I personally value relatively highly on multiple characters. You cannot be slowed, you cannot be blackouted which uh, lets you miss and you cannot be weakened. So all of the stuff that actually sucks for you cannot happen. So put that on your DPS and you should be fine. So those are the stems. Now let's take a look at some gameplay footage because I wanted to showcase how they work. I will end the guide video here as I think that the gameplay would take too long and I want to make uh, the guide video watchable from start to finish. However, I decided to make individual uh, videos for a little bit more gameplay related and build related compositions which will air very soon. You might want to check these out. As always, if you found value within the guide, leave a comment and a like down below and see you in the next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.